Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a solo ultralight hiking setup. As you guys can see, I've already got my tent and my sleeping stuff already set up and arranged. I'm now gonna get out my kit for cooking and whatnot. And I wanna share this with you guys because in a previous video, I mentioned I was gonna go back to alcohol stoves as opposed to canister stoves. That is exactly what I've got here today. So let me just touch on a few items that I have here. I did bring one bottle of water from home. This is going to be a container for dirty water later on as well that I'll have to boil out of the lake. I have my 450 ml titanium cup and my 750 ml titanium coffee French press. So that's all that is right there. And I have a little bit of food inside of the pot as well. And then this is going to be an interesting addition. So this is a DIY project that I made on my own. I do have a separate video on everything from, my, uh, from this roll kit here that I have and everything else that I have in my bushcraft style hiking kit for like a brew kit for daytime. So if you guys are interested in some of this information, I will put a video out probably within the next week or so touching on this. Definitely don't miss out on that. But I do have my tool roll here. And basically what I got inside of here is my spoons, my fire steel, just miscellaneous stuff for cooking. Inside of my outer compartment, this is where all the goodies are at. So. I have my tin of coffee beans, so that's going to be for today and tomorrow. 
I have my alcohol stove. So I went with a titanium alcohol stove burner, which is very useful. I have a little wax canvas pouch of two teas. So I have a daytime tea and a nighttime tea. If I do decide to have tea instead of coffee, I brought that with me. I then have my trusty coffee grinder and handle. Can't go anywhere without that. I have one bottle, I believe this is eight ounces of alcohol fuel for my alcohol stove. My choice of fuel is methyl hydrate because it's readily available and it's very cheap. I think it was almost five liters for $15 and opposed to using a canister stove in my area, it's about 14 to $15 for one small canister. So this is definitely way more bang for the buck going to alcohol. I use methyl hydrate because it's readily available and I put it inside of an Elmer's glue bottle if you guys are wondering. Just this little twist top, very clever, it works really well other than the glue from the sticker that's still on there. But that's what I've got there, I believe that's eight ounces of fuel. And then digging down deeper, I have my titanium windscreen that I'm gonna be pairing with my titanium stove. So I just wanna to touch on all of that right there because I am using my alcohol stove for this trip and some traditional gear that I've made myself. And then I've got my food and everything else kind of tucked all over the place. My outer pouch, I do have a, a pasta dish that I'm gonna be cooking up later on. And then I've got food in my main compartment and that's basically everything else that's in there. And then I also have my change of clothes cleverly placed in this back portion of my backpack. I have folded flat, I've got a pair of socks, I've got a change of pants, and I've got a shirt all folded up neatly flat in there so it doesn't kind of push into my back while I'm hiking. So that's basically it. Let's get all this stuff out and start on a coffee.
All right, guys, our alcohol stove is now rocking out some serious heat. I can feel the heat plume all the way past up here. Like it is very, very hot. So one thing to note is, just listen. Very, very quiet operation. So it's not a jet engine like a canister stove, which is really nice to bring this on, especially those early mornings when you're out in the middle of nowheres, just to throw a match in the alcohol stove and just make up some coffee really nice and quietly. So one thing I will mention though, if you're not familiar with alcohol stoves, one, keep your fuel away from the stove, very, very far away. Two, do not try and top it up until it is absolutely cold because I've seen a lot of people take their bottle and think it's out because you can't really see the flames during the daytime and they've tried to fill it up and it's ended very badly, I'll, I'll just say that. Uh, but right now, we are rocking some serious heat. It is pretty much invisible during the daytime. It, it burns very, very clear, uh, but it is visible at nighttime. So I'm gonna let that do its thing. I put one ounce of methyl hydrate in there and 500 mils of water at this ambient temperature outside, about 25 to 27 degrees Celsius right now. That'll take between five to seven minutes to come to a boil. So it is a little bit of longer process, but it's a much enjoyable process over a loud jet engine from a canister stove. So I wanna let that do its thing. I've got my coffee all ground up, smells amazing. And as soon as that's ready, I wanna dump in the grounds, plunge the French press and enjoy some coffee. And one thing to note, there were squirrels all around me. I don't know what was going on with the coffee, they smelled it or what, but there was seven squirrels I counted bouncing around chirping and coming right around the corner of the tent trying to get out my coffee so for all those viewers that normally watch no that is not rusty and his brothers and sisters this is, this is a totally different spot i don't know what it was but those squirrels came in like they were going to attack so i'm going to be watching my coffee very closely on this trip but like i said i'm going to let that come to a boil and make up some coffee and enjoy it All right, guys, coffee is ready. Definitely really good. Very hot too. So just want to touch on this for one more moment. I used one ounce of fuel in that stove and I'm almost 100% positive this is an eight ounce bottle. So as you guys can see, there is one eighth missing out of the bottle. That boiled 500 ml of water and I can visually see how much fluid or how much fuel I have left. Now, when I took my pot off of the stove, it continued to burn for about 45 seconds afterwards. So realistically, the temperature today is very hot. It actually boiled faster than I was anticipating. So I could have snuffed it out and dumped in the fuel back into the bottle and saved it for later. 
It was only 45 seconds and to be honest, the only other things that I have to cook is supper and coffee or tea in the evening and maybe coffee during the day. So we're looking at about five ounces of fuel usage out of eight. So I have a little bit of a buffer zone for evaporation if that takes place. Um, but that worked out really well, really well. Very, very happy with this setup. It is still screaming hot, so I'm not gonna touch it. But I'm very happy with that setup and I'm very happy that I've kind of incorporated it in all my kind of old fashioned traditional style gear. So you guys will be seeing more of that in my dedicated video when I do break out that video and upload it on my traditional kind of bushcraft day hike brew kit. I'll incorporate all the stuff in there, show you what I bring and how it works and how many different items I can put in there versus bringing the same pot. I can actually bring a kettle. And, I, and anyways, more on that in, in a separate video. But for now, I've got to say, this coffee is definitely awesome. The squirrels are kind of picking around the trees, eyeballing me very closely as I drink my coffee. And I don't know why. And I'm kind of worried about tonight what's going to happen to my beloved tent. Because as you guys know, some regular viewers, you guys know the name when I say Rusty. And you guys probably remember how my MSR hubba ended up with a giant hole in it and a squirrel kind of hitting the eject button to get out of there real quick in the morning as I was camping. So I hope nothing happens to my gear this evening, squirrel related. That was with one squirrel and there's seven here today. So I'm going to be kind of sleeping light tonight. But anyways, I'm going to enjoy my coffee and I'll catch up with you guys very soon. All right guys, coffee break is all done. Definitely refreshed now. And just come down to the fire pit area and it's kind of, it's a little bit different than the last time I was here. It's a little bit wider, which is kind of cool, but uh, I'm just collecting some of the firewood out of here because I am gonna have a small fire tonight, nothing big. I certainly don't need it for the heat and I definitely don't need it for cooking. The only reason why I'm gonna make a fire is simply because I want to. I wanna sit here in the fire watch the sun on the lake as the sun sets and just enjoy the evening like I usually do. So I'm going to be burning the leftover pieces of wood. So that is some firewood, but I don't have a saw with me. So everything's going to be collected using my knife and that is it. So not really a big deal. I don't need a major fire. I'm just going to collect some smaller pieces, maybe baton some of them down, get it collected over here just enough for maybe an hour and a half or two hours, just sitting right here on the stump maybe and just enjoy the lake with a little bit of crackling campfire. So it's gonna be a little bit more work finding wood and collecting wood than usual, but it's gonna be fun regardless. And the weight savings of not bringing a saw is always worth it. So I'm gonna head into the forest, grab a few small pieces of wood, bring them out here and start processing it.
All right, guys, I've got enough firewood processed here to basically accomplish what I'm after this evening, which is just to relax right here with hopefully a beautiful sunset out on the lake and a nice crackling campfire. I even got a stump here. I'm probably just going to move over sideways. That way I've got a nice view and a comfy seat. So right now it is very, very hot out. It is probably just an hour past mid-afternoon. So the heat and the sun is extremely hot right now. So I'm just going to leave this alone for a little while. I think I'm going to make my way over to the tent, have a drink, and jump inside for probably an hour or two. And then when I do come out, I'll come over here, get the fire lay ready to go, and slowly pick away at supper. Alright, so I've got the fire lay all ready to go later on this evening when it comes time. I'll light a match, toss it in there, and that should go up no problem. This stuff is extremely dry, and I'm pretty sure I have enough for at least an hour and a half. So, which will be perfect as long as I time it right for the sunset out there, because I do want to sit here and enjoy the sunset with a little bit of fire. Uh, so I'm going to leave this alone for now. I'm going to go back over towards the tent and make up my supper over there. Um, you know what? Actually, I'm going to bring it down here. I'll bring the alcohol stove down here. I'll get it propped up on one of these rocks, maybe somewhere around here, maybe even the stump behind me. And we'll cook right down here in front of the water. That way, any kind of food scent will be down here. I could just scoop it into the fire pit and then burn it off later on. So I'm going to go grab my stuff and bring it down here and we'll start cooking supper.
right, so this alcohol stove is going really well right now. This is water out of the lake that I filled up with my water bottle. So this does have to come to a full rolling boil. I added an ounce and a half and the same amount of water as last time. So hopefully that brings it to a rolling boil. And then for supper, I just have one of these Sidekick instant rice dishes. It, uh, it's harvest chicken. I've been doing this a lot lately during summertime. It's hot. I really don't feel like cooking. So these are super fast and super easy. I also have a piece of bread that I brought with me and one red onion, which I'm gonna cut up now and add in there. And I think I can hear it slightly boiling right now. So hopefully that'll come to a really rolling boil and, uh, and sterilize that water. Now I don't have my cutting board with me. I do have my titanium cup and my knife. I'm not gonna smash it into the cup. I'm just barely gonna kinda work the knife down through the onion and gently cut because I don't want to dull my knife on my cup. But uh, this is basically going to be supper. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple supper. And then I'm just going to clean up and get these onion bits in the fire. I have a plastic bag, a little Ziploc bag where I always keep all of my garbage. This was a question that was asked probably last week, I believe. I uploaded the video. Somebody asked, does the garbage that you put in your pocket attract animals into your tent? And ordinarily, I would say yes, anything will attract animals to a degree, but what I do is I take all of my garbage, including the stuff in my pocket and all this, I put it inside of a Ziploc bag, and then I shove that bag underneath of my sleeping pad to really help minimize the, the scent from the food. And that seems to be working good for me. And then when I get back to my truck, I have a, um, a plastic coffee tin, like a Folgers container, that's totally empty, and I put all my garbage inside of that, put the lid on, and then when I get home, I dump it out in the garbage can. So it's a very simple uh, system that I like to work with, and sorry, this is boiling right now, it just took me by surprise. I wasn't sure if that was the alcohol bubbling or that bu bubbling, but uh, yeah, anyways, and the sound that you guys are hearing in the background, that really annoying buzzing sound, that is a sun locust. So we have tons of locusts, if you kind of pick that up in the background over the boiling, just a really annoying buzzing sound. All kinds of locusts out right now, which means it's extremely hot out. So this is boiling pretty good right now, though. So I'm going to get my pasta in there in just a moment. I'm going to cut up my onion, toss that in there, get this all cooked up, and then enjoy a hot supper. All right, guys, campfire is now lit. Supper was awesome. Everything is cleaned up, and now it is relax time. So I moved my chair back quite a ways at two reasons. One, I've got a tree behind me that works as a backrest, 
and two that fire is very very hot and i can feel the heat from here and it's still about 26 degrees celsius outside right now so it's still very hot and i'm really hoping it cools down nice and cool tonight when we get that cold air rolling off the lake all the way up in there behind me over towards the tent that would be awesome so i'm looking forward to a nice cool crisp morning with some hot coffee and uh, hopefully all that comes together now there are some clouds in the sky and it's kind of blocking all the color from the sunset so right now it's got kind of a hazy grayness over there a little bit of blue sky but that might mean that it's going to rain tonight or tomorrow so fingers crossed we might actually get lucky and get some rain on this trip that would be really cool so i'm going to be hanging out here for quite a while uh, probably till dark i'm just going to load on a little bit more wood burn it all up tonight i don't have a lot but i'm just going to sit here relax and watch the lake and enjoy the campfire for a little while Alright guys, it is now starting to get quite dark out and I'm just getting some of my lights ready to go. So I've already got my pajamas out of my backpack, I got my change of clothes inside of the tent and I've got kind of an interesting product here. So this is something that I bring with me when I go truck camping quite often and I've actually started bringing this on so many hiking trips. It is absolutely a treat. I ended up finding these on Amazon. They're kind of like these little light bulbs and it's got a USB plug and then a power switch and a dimmer on it. Now, the reason why I bring this, and I know this looks like a large piece, I also have another night, um, a night core light here. Let me grab this out of here real quick for you guys. I have a night core dome lamp up top. I get that off of there. So this light works really well. It goes in white and red, and that's the reason why I love it is because it goes in a red color. So hang this back up here really quick. These dome lights that I picked up, I think I paid like $24 for two of these. And that's the reason why I got them. They were cheap, they're super lightweight, and they work on battery banks. So check this out. These things are crazy bright, and they are so awesome for tent camping and for photography, which is why I absolutely love them. Because I can plug these into my battery bank, and they will last much longer than one of those little dome lamps up top. Check this out. That's pretty bright. So that's the brightest setting right there. I believe it's 600 lumens. That's off and you turn it on and then I can actually dim it down and let go to wherever I want it to stop. That's on the lowest right there. And then I hold it, I can stop right there or I can keep going down all the way back up to its full brightest and then off. So these are awesome. I'm gonna hang one right up on top of my hook inside the tent right now. And this is kind of my night light when I'm in there watching a movie and doing stuff getting changed. And it also helps out for photography and filming as well. And my battery bank is going to last a long time with this. So I think my battery bank on this, with this on full, lasts I think 24 hours. So that's a very, very long time. Whereas my dome lamp up here will last probably about 6 hours to 4 hours on high. Uh, depending. I'm not totally sure with this model, but they don't last very long, especially when I'm doing photography and camera work. That light is on non-stop. And then by the time I get into the tent to use it at nighttime, it ends up it, it ends up dying on me at some point. So this right here is my go-to now. I'm just going to get this strung up in the tent, and I'll have to figure out how I'm going to route the wire off to the side a little later on. But I just wanted to share that with you guys, that that's what this is. I know it looks a little funky, big, uh, big long cord, which is awesome for truck camping, like I said. But uh, that's what that is. So with this in there, you guys can get a look at that. It lights up the entire tent. That's on high, and I can bring it down to about half power. So that's about half power right there. So it's a very nice light, super lightweight, um, cheap, and reliable. And that's what I like. So I've got my lights all set up. I'm also going to grab my headlamp out of my backpack and my main flashlight, which I'll wear on my hip. And, uh, and I'm ready for nighttime. So I'm going to be hanging out by the fire for probably another 30 minutes to 40 minutes. And then I'm going to make my way over here to the tent and say goodnight to you guys and crawl in and get changed and watch my movies like I always do. So back to the fire for a little bit, guys.
All right, I got the last couple pieces of firewood onto the fire burning right now. We do have a bit of a sunset out there right now, actually. It's turning pink and purple, but it is getting dark very, very quickly. So I'm just going to enjoy this fire for probably a few more minutes, maybe 10, 15 more minutes. And it's just about burned out right now. And then I'm going to make my way back over to the tent and basically just get in and get changed. I'm very, very hot and I'm very sweaty. These clothes are kind of just covered in sweat and I should mention the reason why I wear pants is it's easier to spot the wood ticks in shorts they kind of go right up your legs and and that's not fun so I like wearing the pants this way I can kind of keep track of what's going on and where they are and not only that walking through the bushes too and thorn bushes and getting all cut up is never fun so I'm actually really really excited to get out of these clothes and jump in the tent get away from this hot fire and probably lay with the tent door wide open for quite a while and let the night air roll in and movie night and then off to bed All right, guys, inside the tent now, I've already gotten changed into my base layer pants. I'm gonna hold off on my base layer shirt though because it is a long sleeve shirt and it's still quite warm out right now. So I'm gonna put this aside for now. I've also got my hoodie in here as a pillow. Obviously I didn't need to wear that today, but hopefully I'll need to wear it in the morning. And then I've got my down sleeping bag here as well, which is gonna stay in the stuff sack for quite a few more hours until it gets cold out, so. It is very, very comfortable in here though. I do gotta say, I still hear the campfire crackling a tiny bit is just about out. And uh, and the nightlife is starting to come to life in the woods. I can hear the birds chirping, I can hear the owls. I heard a loon across the lake, so that's pretty awesome. But uh, I think for now, I'm just gonna get my movie rolling on my phone and I'm just gonna relax for the evening. So I'm gonna catch up with you guys in the morning. First thing for coffee. Good night guys.
Good morning guys. It is a beautiful, nice, crisp and cool morning out here. We've got birds in the trees. We've got squirrels bouncing around like crazy. Even some loons on the lake and I believe a hawk up in a tree somewhere as I could hear kind of making a little bit of noise in the background. But I gotta say, definitely an awesome morning. The sun is starting to rise behind me. So we got some golden light kind of working its way through the treetops. And I'm basically just sitting here enjoying some morning coffee and some breakfast. So for breakfast today, I have dried fruit. I brought two or three pieces of dried mango. And then inside of my pot bag, I have a whole bunch of trail mix. So we got peanuts, uh, cranberries, raisins, just regular trail mix. And this is basically gonna be my breakfast, just something nice, fast, and easy. I'm just gonna eat this up, enjoy my coffee, and probably get dressed into my outer clothes and slowly start packing up some of my cooking gear. But right now, enjoy some breakfast. All right, so it's time to load the larger items that I have with me, and this is always the best part of packing, simple and light. The pack up and the setup are always very easy and very quick. So I've already got my cooking, most of my cooking stuff. I still have my pot and my cup there, my bottle of water. Uh, my knife here is gonna go on my hip, so that's not going in the backpack. But this portion right here is all my cooking stuff. And that's basically packed away. I've got the main compartment of the backpack totally empty right now. So what I like to do is take my tent. This is the Nature Hike Vic 1. This is the same size as pretty much every single one person backpacking tent on the market. The exact same size right here as the MSR Hubba NX, which I also own. And it packs down the same size. So this is a very common size for a one person tent. So what I like to do is just jam it down in there, vertical. Everything I put in here goes vertical. That way when I need to grab something, I could just grab that and pull it out instead of having everything stacked on top of each other like this in the backpack. Now to get to my sleeping bag, I need to move that out of the way. And then I need to reach in and grab and so on and so forth. So I like keeping everything vertical. That way I can grab and pull it out. So next up would be my sleeping pad. Same thing, pack it in there vertical. And then my sleeping bag. Now I have options with this because this is a very small packable one pound sleeping bag. That is its fullest size, but if I scrunch it down and compress the straps down, it will go down half that size. I am gonna leave it full size because I actually need the size to fill out the backpack. So I'm just gonna jam it in there vertical right between the sleeping pad and the, the wall of my backpack basically. So I've got three items vertical. I'm gonna take my water bottle, jam it down there in a little empty void, just like that. And now the only thing I have left in there is my pot. And you guys can see the amount of room that I have left in there is enormous. So even with my pot system in there, I could stand it up, which I'm going to, or I could actually lay it down sideways and there's a ton of room in there. So I'm going to stand it up to take up more room. And that's something that I do very often. I am going to be taking my sweater off and I'm actually going to jam it right in there to take up all that space instead of hanging it on the outside. I don't have any food items left because I ate everything so that saves a little bit of room but to be honest the food really never took up much room in this pack loadout. So that's basically it and I do have my clothing, my sleep clothing in the back of the, uh, the backpack area so there is a little sleeve back here. Clothing is in there nice and flat folded and I'm basically ready to go so i'm just gonna get my knife on sweater off jam it in here and that is basically the kit all packed up so if you guys have any questions drop it down in the comment section i thank you guys very much for joining me and watching the video once again peace out and i'll catch you guys in the next video later on guys